Hello crafty friends, my name is Alicia but you can call me Crafty Owl. And in today's video, I'm going to be creating a quick and easy birthday card using the brand new Birthday Basics Stamp and Die Set from Simon Hurley and Spellbinders. I hope you'll stick around, see what I'm going to create, and get a few tips along the way. Spellbinders has teamed up with Simon Hurley to create three new stamp and coordinating die collections. There is Butterfly Kisses, Succulents, and the one that I'm going to be using today, Birthday Basics. Now I will have the new products linked in the description box below, as well as the rest of the Spellbinders online store and their social media. Make sure to check out those links for more info on the products and to get more inspiration. Here is a close-up look at the new stamp set. There are 15 total stamps on here, including these two large, fun focal points and some coordinating sentiments and other stamps. The die set is five dies, and it cuts out those main images, the balloons, the string for the balloon, and then the little floral corner here. As soon as I saw this stamp set, I knew that I wanted to use a little confetti border to make a background for a birthday card. I'm gonna be doing minimal coloring of the main image. Instead, I'm gonna be adding most of my color and creating a background with that border strip. Now, as I get into the process, I will tell you about other products and tools I bring in, but as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! I'm gonna get started today by stamping, and so the ink on my image has a little extra time to dry before I color it, I am gonna stamp the cake first. This will be stamped with Memento Tuxedo Black ink on a scrap of Nina Solar White cardstock. I did put it toward the bottom, but I made sure that I would have enough room later for the die to fit around it. You might have noticed there that I did rub off those manufacturing oils before I inked it up for the first time. This is just always a good idea with new stamps. It helps them take the ink a little bit better, and then as they get used more and more, they're going to naturally take the ink better on their own. I set the cake to the side, and now it's time to stamp the confetti. I will be using a rainbow of inks for this and I will list the individual colors in the description box and I cut a piece of cardstock that was four and a quarter by five and a half. You'll notice here I do have my sticky mat inside my Misty. That's so I can easily count how far up and down I need to go because of the grid and it holds it in place because of the stickiness. I want the confetti to be angled a bit, so I angled it as much as I could that it would still fill left to right on the piece of cardstock. To try and help with spacing out the rainbow so all the colors fit, I do start with those two center colors, the yellow and green, so that's why my confetti piece is kind of in the middle of my cardstock. The yellow ink is on the light side, so I did ink it up and stamp it twice before moving it for my green. Now what I did previously off camera, I measured the height of this stamp and it was just about an inch tall. So I tried to move my piece up one inch using the grid. Now it did go a little bit too far, so I moved it back down, but just do your best to eyeball it. And then you'll want to make sure that you clean your stamp between each of the colors. So I just kept moving up and adding inks. And then once I was down and past the purple, I moved the cardstock to the starting place, like where I had it for the yellow, and I moved it down so I could do the orange and red. So here's a look at that finished piece stamped. You will notice there is some white in the top and bottom corners, but that will be cut off later when I cut this piece down. Now it is time to color in my cake. I'm gonna be using Spectrum Noir Tri-Blend markers, and I will list all of the individual colors in the description box below. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, I'm just gonna do very basic coloring here. My cake and the tray it's on is going to be white, and then I'm going to do a rainbow across the candles and frosting. 
Now, even though the cake and the tray are white, I do want to make it appear as though they're white and still give them some shading. So I brought in one of my lightest gray markers that I have. I put a little outline around the edge of each of the areas and blended that in with a colorless blender. After the cake and tray had their shading, it was then time to color the candles. Now I know you're not going to see it very well because the candles are so little, but I did do some very basic shading. I colored the entire candle with the light part of the marker, and then with the dark I went in on the sides, just the left and the right. Then I blended that out just a teeny tiny a bit with the mid color, and then finally came back in with the light color. That way the center of the candle is lighter, which makes it look a little more rounded. Again, you probably can't see it on camera, but it does add a little something in person. Now since I only had five candles but six colors, I did make that frosting on the bottom purple. After the cake was all colored, I brought in the coordinating die and cut that out. Also, while I was off camera, I used a rectangle die from my stash and I cut the confetti piece down a little bit. I decided I wanted to make a landscape card and that I wanted the sentiment, which I chose bring on the cake, to go to the right side. Now you'll see here if I just put it up against the background, it might be kind of hard to read with all of the color in the background. So I decided to bring in a scrap of vellum to not only help the sentiment stand out, but also to help the cake stand out. I cut that to about two inches tall and maybe seven inches wide. I just want enough to wrap around the back side of the card. Now since vellum is non-porous, I do need to use a special ink, like I'll be using Stays On Black today. And I'm gonna set up the stamp so it's toward the right, but again, I need some extra room to fold around the back of the card front. Once I had that in place, I inked it up and stamped it, and it worked great on the first try, so I could move on to the next step. Off camera, I cut a scrap of black cardstock so I would have a small mat behind my confetti piece, and I cut and folded a card base. Now let's get this card put together. To start, I figured out where my cake would go and how far up I wanted my vellum to go, and then I added adhesive to the back of the confetti piece and wrapped the vellum and adhered it to the back. This is a great way to hide the adhesive when you use vellum. The confetti piece got placed flat down onto the black mat, and then those layers got added to the card front. For a little dimension on the card, I did add some foam tape to the back of the cake before adding it to the card front. And now we're going to add a little bit of sparkle. I brought in my yellow stickles and I put a little bit on each of the flames. I tried to get the smallest drop I could at the base of the flame and kind of spread it up into the tip with the tip of the bottle. And then to add some more sparkle, I brought in some purple stickles and added it to the frosting at the bottom. I did try to do each little part of the frosting separately, so it did look like there was division between them to keep that same shape. I let this dry completely off camera, and when it was, I added some extra gems to the front around the cake and the sentiment, and on the inside, I did a light purple stamp of that same birthday cake. Here are some close-up looks at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together this quick and easy birthday card using the new Birthday Basics Stamp and Die Collection from Spellbinders and Simon Hurley. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.